invasion boats prepare for a third landing in Italy. Powerful mechanized units, big guns, and heavy concentrations of British, American, and Canadian infantry embark to join the Allied Fifth Army. The size of the invasion fleet is enormous. Somewhere off the Italian west coast, ships loaded with supplies and equipment approach their rendezvous. the battle line when these films were issued. Heavy fighting in the mountains in and around Casino. Now, taking the Nazis completely by surprise, the Allies hurl their fleet upon Natuno and Anzio, points behind the German lines, 30 miles south of Rome. At dawn, landing ships and barges stand offshore. Small boats begin to pour in. The initial landing meets with no opposition. Heavy equipment rolls out of the huge landing ships in support of the infantry. The Allies have destroyed nearby enemy airfields, and the Nazis are slow to recover. On the second day, dive bombers appear. A landing craft is hit. attack fails to slow the unloading. Through a lane cleared of landmines, troops push into the town of Anzio. Here there have been skirmishes with the enemy, and Nazi dead litter the streets. Prisoners are taken. Men of the German defense garrisons are loaded upon barges for transportation to the rear. First phase of a bold allied stroke, this action on the beaches south of Rome may prove a decisive factor in the United Nations campaign against the Nazis in Italy. Chinese troops battle their way into Changte, gateway to the rich rice lands in western Hunan province. Six weeks before, eight Japanese divisions had taken the city. Four times in 40 days, Changte changed hands. Now, crack well-armed Chinese forces sweep back. This time, the enemy is in retreat. Japanese casualties number more than 40,000 killed and wounded, the costliest Jap defeat of the war. The Chinese general in command of the forces which retook the city has reason to be pleased. He is able to present impressive quantities of captured Japanese equipment for inspection by allied military observers. Japanese prisoners, men who were told by their warlords seven years ago that China would be conquered in six months.
Chinese troop reinforcements, now better armed with modern equipment, pour through the shattered streets of Changte. The once thriving city of 140,000 inhabitants is in complete ruin. Of 10,000 buildings, less than 40 remain standing. The remnants of Changte's civilian population return to find their homes in ruins. Now they gather to await the distribution of relief funds with which to buy food, to begin life anew. Fingerprinted for identification, each civilian is given 100 Chinese dollars. These are the people of China who, despite untold hardships, have resisted the Japanese invader, a people who continue to carry on the fight. Just south of the heavily fortified Japanese Marshall Islands, already a battleground, the enemy had built on Makin Island vital naval and air bases. These are official pictures of the American invasion and capture of Makin Island. Landing upon a beach of rough, jagged lava rock, United States forces come in under fire and advance into the jungle beyond. Simultaneously with other blows throughout the area, the sudden assault takes the enemy by surprise. An enemy machine gun nest in an abandoned ship holds up the advance. By radio, the infantrymen send for reinforcements of tanks. the Japanese with machine guns. Now, bombs finish the job. those found are Korean laborers, pressed into service by their Japanese masters. For these Japanese, there was no surrender. Colonel James Roosevelt, eldest son of the president, was second in command of a scouting raid on Makin two years before. Today, he sees the Army win complete control after three days fighting. Another important base for the United Nations in the Battle of the Pacific. <laughs> 